good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on Building Your Marketing Plan from Local to Global, presented by Australian Business Consulting and Solutions. I'm Ray Welling, Digital Manager for ABCNS, and I'm presenting this webinar along with Jessica Blake, our Senior Marketing Consultant. Jessica, welcome. Thank you, Ray. So glad to be here. Now first, let me tell you a little bit about Australian Business Consulting and Solutions. ABCNS offers a number of services for businesses, including information and advice on human resources, industrial relations, work safety, technology, and international trade. We're affiliated with the New South Wales Business Chamber, and as part of our services, we operate a full-service marketing agency that can help small and medium businesses with everything from website development through to graphic design, collateral, and everything in between. We've got a very talented team of in-house designers and developers with experience in helping businesses connect more strongly with their customers. Now, the purpose of today's webinar is to discuss some of the key issues you need to understand in keeping your business top of mind with your current customers and taking advantage of the opportunities presented by online technology to capture new customers, both here and around the globe. So we're going to take you through a range of marketing ideas for you to think about. Uh, we will be answering some of the questions uh, that were asked uh, ahead of time, um, and you're also able to submit any questions that you have during the webinar via the chat box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And I see that some of the people are, uh, are actually using that already. So feel free to ask any questions as they come up, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can during the question and answer period towards the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll also be asking you some poll questions along the way where you can give us your response on related topics. And then these poll questions will also help us uh, going forward to choose more specific topics for uh, future webinars. Now first, let's kick off our polls uh, by asking uh, which of these topics that you see is your biggest marketing challenge. So, is it coping with the changing business landscape, building a relationship with your customers, which involves trust and engagement, uh, finding the time to plan, deciding on the best traditional tactics, trying to keep up with the flood of new digital marketing options, or building word of mouth? Now, those, in fact, are the topics that we're going to be uh, covering first up today uh, in our discussion. So we'll just have a quick look at the polls here, and it looks like uh, digital technologies and the changing business landscape, which is sort of related, are, uh, are kind of leading at the moment. Okay. That's <coughs> great. That, that gives us a good idea. Yeah, we'll come back to that poll. Um, before we go forward, let's just quickly look back and think about your current marketing channels. A couple of things that I really want you to think about here is, do you think that your marketing shows off your brand and your brand's personality? And this next one's a really important one. Do you think your marketing inspires trust in your audience? And lastly, do you think your audience relates to you as a person, or do you think they actually relate to you as an entity? Without losing the currency of traditional channels, our consumers and clients are changing at a rate of knots and are taking in information in many different ways, and we're going to explore this further going forward. Okay, now the model that we as marketers and businesses have always followed has been about us. We've worked on the principle of influencing, persuading customers. In short, we talk and they listen. The classic example of this is the uh, anecdote about uh, Henry Ford, the early automaker, where he said, uh, well, the customer can have any color they want as long as it's black. Because back then, uh, there was a market for, uh, for automobiles, and uh, people just wanted a car. And uh, Henry Ford tried to do it as, as efficiently as possible. And he said, well, I'm going to make one sort of car. I'm going to paint it one color, and you can kind of take it or leave it. But obviously, in the, uh, the past few decades, that has changed quite dramatically. And part of the reason is that we've uh, created so much clutter that our consumers don't even want to hear our message anymore. 
And so that leads me into the, uh, the, the important point that it's not just one-way communication anymore. The big difference is that it's not about us anymore, it's actually about them. So it's all about the growing power of the consumer and the declining power of the traditional marketing. Now, we'll be using a few buzzwords in our presentation, but we'll be explaining them along the way. Now, please send through any messages via the chat box if you need more information or explanation as we go through it. Now, a buzzword I want to talk about first up is this phrase, inbound marketing. Now, this is a term that describes this shift that I was talking about, the shift to consumer power and how it works itself out in the contemporary marketplace. Now, inbound marketing isn't a tactic or a channel or a technology. It's a way to approach your marketing so you can capitalize on the way that consumers are making the buying decisions today. It refers to the fact that today our customers value personalized, relevant content and connections. They don't want interruptive messages, and they want that information at every stage of the marketing funnel. Inbound marketing allows you to attract visitors, it can leads, close customers, and delight them into promoting your business to others. In a nutshell, inbound marketing means that you need to create marketing information that people are really interested in. You're not just giving them information that you are interested in. So, as I mentioned, expectations are really changing con for consumers now with, with this uh, newfound power that they have. Uh, I'd like you to, uh, and it's just like how you and I think about marketing. These statements on the slide here ring true for all of us. So what are consumers saying today? You know, I want it now. I want it to be easy. I want an experience. I don't want to be sold to, and this is an important point that we'll be talking a bit about quite a bit. Uh, I want to get to know you. I crave good customer service. I want to buy from someone I trust. I want to buy from a friend. So with this in mind, here at ABCS, we like to encourage all of our clients and customers to take a few hours to work through exactly what is your plan, what is your messaging, what is your service delivery, and, and lastly, what technology it is that you use. Here you can see is a quote by Simon Sinek. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. They buy into who you are and into your brand. So the other day I was listening to a TED talk with Simon Sinek and he told this story. He said, imagine you're going out on a date. Who would you rather leave your children with? You know, those things which are most precious to you. Option one, the 16-year-old who lives down the road that you've known for years but who has no babysitting experience. Or option two, the 30-year-old who's just moved into the area but we don't know from where but who has 10 years babysitting experience. Now, it's funny, and I think you'll, explain, you'll agree with me on this. Most people would choose the 16-year-old. We would rather trust the 16-year-old because they're from our community and we're more likely to trust people who are from our community. So that leads me to my next point. How do we actually inspire trust in our brand? I'm going to go through each of these points one by one. Two-way communication. A fantastic example of that is a company called Black Milk Clothing. Started by a man called James Lillis, it's a clothing store which only sells online. Founded in 2009, it now has a multi, it's now a multi-million dollar business employing more than 100 people. And it has a whopping 554,000 likes and 47,925 people are talking about this on Facebook. They're massive numbers. Think about your own Facebook pages and see where those numbers compare. From the outset, James focused on building up an online community, recognizing that people buy from people and people buy from a brand that has been endorsed by other people. They now have two women whose sole job is managing their community. The two women work in separate shifts and every single comment is answered. They're always talking and answering questions. 
staff shoot videos of themselves and post, um, post them online. They sign off with their own personal name so the readers have a sense of who they're talking to. And the impact of this is the whole process uh, gets a human element to it. It isn't just a marketing copy and paste. That leads me into my next point, be real and authentic. I met the lady who runs this Twitter account at a social media event the other day. Her name's Carmel Ruggeri and her Twitter handle is at Camar. So she runs a Sicilian restaurant in Russell Lee near Five Dog. She started on Twitter first before she owned a restaurant and she started on it basically because she wanted to talk about the things that she loved and she wanted to follow what other people were saying about the things that she loved. The three main things, food, travel and Sicily. And what happened was that people started to know her and she created relationships with people. She wrote back every single time someone asked her a question or commented on a post. And I can't stress this enough. If you're going to start up a social media uh, page, make sure you have the, the resources in place to actually answer every single question. And going forward, what this meant was that when she launched her restaurant, she had a ready-made audience and loyal followers. They all told their friends and they all kept coming. Next, the importance of word of mouth cannot be underestimated. We got a comment before from someone asking a question around word of mouth ideas. Here's the slide. When I go out to dinner, I check out a restaurant on Yelp or Urban Spoon and see what people have said about it. When I stay somewhere overseas or here in Australia, I now book through a site called Airbnb. I read the reviews and I can also see if any of my friends on Facebook have stayed at that particular place and what they thought of it. If I go on tour, I check out what people are saying on TripAdvisor. Find where your business is best listed on a review site and encourage your customers to leave reviews for you. Or at the very least, find out if there are any bad reviews online. You won't be able to take them down, but you can use the feedback to try and sort out whatever the problem was. Next we have Pinterest, Instagram and Flickr. They're all platforms where you can showcase your brand and show people who you are and what you like and give them ideas and examples. Basically with more than 48 million users, Pinterest is one of the most popular social networks on the web. After its recent fundraising round of 200 million, it now has an estimated value of between 2 billion and 2.5 billion. Not too shabby, right, for a virtual inspiration board founded only three years ago. But within that time, many users have found it ultra creative ways to use the visual platform. You can use Pinterest to post up videos, your company history, all sorts of things. Next, be available and informative. Here's a microsite for a butcher's. Funny site for me to talk about since I'm vegetarian. <laughs> but this butcher is actually creating a dialogue with people. You can ask Fix Meat a question about how you cook your meat. Would you buy goods from him as opposed to someone who you didn't have a relationship with? Yes, I think you would. They also have an app and they sell their meat online. And for what they would have spent on this website, they're probably saving money in many different other ways. If you're looking for offline solutions to being available, you could try running information evenings or set up a stall at the market to create a more personal touch point with your audience. It's all about being in touch with your community. And at the end of the day, love consistency. It's what your customer sees when they interact with you that they'll remember. So make sure you're consistent across all your touch, customer touch points. You know, it's different things to think about. Invest in uniforms for your staff. Make sure your shop front and signage is up to date and stands out. Ensure the graphics on your car look new. And have your contact details on all your customer touch points either your phone, website or both. Okay, now that once you've tackled those uh, ideas, you need to think about the next steps. So, what's your plan of action? We've outlined a few uh, of the uh, things that you need to look at in terms of the planning process here. You know, identifying your needs and goals, doing a bit of research, brainstorming, uh, allocating resources, then you develop your action plan, execute, measure your results. So we'll, let's go through this uh, in a little bit more detail. Now, of course, doing anything these days is expensive, and none of us has money to waste. 
But the more thought that goes into planning like this, the more cost effective and more effective your marketing will be. So it's really important to stay focused. Really take the time to step back and think about what you'd like your business to achieve and what you'd like your marketing to achieve. We're going to go through each of these steps in more detail. Firstly, understand your goals. And I'd like to do this as a quick poll. Thinking about your business you know, and everything that we've sort of just talked about there, try and complete this sentence. I'm going to achieve what through my marketing? Are you going to sell last minute stock quickly like a butcher may have to? Are you going to try and reduce your customer service calls like if you're a flat pack furniture company maker you may have to? Are you trying to showcase your services and show that you're experts in your industry? Very big for B2B. Do you want to promote your events? Do you need to encourage people to visit your store or cafe? Are you trying to generate leads for your sales team, another big one for B2B? Or do you just simply need to create a conversation? Okay, looking at the, uh, the votes that we've got coming in, it looks like showcasing your services and generating leads are, are both uh, by far the most, uh, the most popular uh, responses for that. So good, something to think about. Okay, next thing you need to do is you need to really know and understand your audience. You need to understand who you're trying to target and, uh, and build up some personas about who those people are. And critically, you need to understand what are the needs of your audience. Now in business, the customer's needs might not be quite so obvious, but a key to success is to work out what needs your customers are looking to have met, and then you structure your offering so that it clearly meets that need. For example, we've got two different audiences that we're describing here, um, and they both relate to uh, what sort of car that they might buy. So audience A are females around uh, age 20 to 30. They need a stylish and fuel efficient car. You'll find them on Facebook, they might be on LinkedIn, and um, things like fashion communities. Whereas with uh, audience B, they're males aged 18 to 24. Um, they need a cheap and cool car. And you can find them as well on Facebook, but places like Twitter, student groups, YouTube, etc. So if you can set something like this up for your uh, audiences, you might end up with four or five or even more targeted audiences. But it's usually best to pick uh, a smaller number, maybe even one or two of these personas to focus on until you have the time, the funds, and the experience to focus on broader groups. So we're going to go back to those uh, audiences. But next let's just talk about for a minute choosing the right channel. Let's take the example of you want to sell last minute stock quickly. What do people check all the time? They check their phones and their social media. So why not think about creating a community on Facebook to post up last minute deals? Or alternatively send out mass communications via mobile to your client base for once off specials. According to that poll before, one of the most important things um, uh, that people listening today want to, want to do is to focus on how to share advice and information. So which are the channels that are going to best meet these goals? To, um, to encourage more engagement with your audience, you may consider using Twitter and information evening, webinars such as this, white papers, or YouTube is another really good one. Facebook and print advertising are great for generating interest in coupons and competitions. YouTube's a wonderful one for how-to videos. LinkedIn, perfect for B2B, will brand your business as a thought leader. Pinterest, Instagram and Flickr are being used to visualize what matters most to your mission. Webinars and white papers to educate and build trust and to, and to work through a sales funnel from those. Um, apps, QR codes and gamification 
gamification to engage. Or lastly, you know, drive people to your website by focusing on your SEO and SEM. What we want to do here at ABCS is really encourage our clients to choose one or two channels and to focus on them really well. Here you can see two Facebook pages, one for Australian Bananas and one for an air conditioning company. The Australian Bananas has great imagery, regular posts, promotions, coupons. It's a really engaging site as opposed to the air conditioning company which has no banner images, no posts and 15 likes. You know, it actually makes them look worse than what I'm sure they are. Something we can't iterate enough is no matter what channel you choose, make sure that you do it well. And then when you've mastered that channel, make sh you can then move on to the next one. Although the hot topic is really about digital on online marketing, which we are going to discuss further in, in greater detail in a minute, I don't want us to forget the importance of staying top of mind for customers in your local area. Here's a list of local marketing activities to consider. We had a bit of a brainstorm in the office and came up with the following offline activities. I'm sure you have loads that you do within your business. Remember to always ask where your customers heard about you. This will enable you to analyze the results and ensure you're maximizing your marketing activities. Okay, as we saw with the results of the, the first poll that, um, that we put up, um, trying to get your head around uh, technology and the changing business landscape are things of really key interest uh, you know, for all of you. Um, and it's also, you know, if you think about the title of this uh, webinar, moving your marketing from local to global, uh, we've been talking about uh, a lot of the local angles, but by embracing technological change, you're going to be able to um, really uh, look at, uh, take on some opportunities uh, that will allow you to become a global business. So first up, let's ask another poll question, which uh, will give us an idea of what your activities are like, but also will uh, help us know what sort of things we should focus on for future webinars. So if you could answer those questions, what's your most important online tool at the moment? Is it organic search, paid search, is it website content, is it your mobile site, is it Facebook and Twitter account, your YouTube channel, Pinterest, or maybe something else? Okay, it looks pretty clear that uh, website content uh, and um, organic search results are uh, the things that are most used by the, uh, the people that we've got here today. Now, you need to be prepared to continually seek out new ways of doing things. So today that means making sure that everything you do is mobile optimized and understanding how your customers want to interact with your business and develop your offering accordingly. So let's just spend um, a a minute talking about this idea of being mobile optimized. I noticed that um, with those poll results, it looks like no one actually said that that was um, one of the key areas for them was uh, was a mobile site. Probably not surprising for um, if it's a small and medium businesses that are most of the people uh, that are listening today. But if you look at the uh, the data on this slide here, you really have to uh, come to terms with the fact that mobile is becoming increasingly important. You know, we're really at this tipping point right about now where more internet, internet traffic is being viewed on mobile devices than on desktop devices. Now this is being driven as much by the rise of tablet device as smartphone use, but when you combine them together, that means that as of now, more people are uh, viewing Internet, uh, you know, internet sites via some sort of mobile device. Now, the concept of mobile could easily be the topic of its own webinar, and it and it might be in the future. Uh, we haven't really got enough time to div delve into it deeply today. But even if you're a one-person business, you can't ignore mobile. As a bare minimum, you need to consider how you're
website and any other online content you create looks when it's viewed on a mobile device. Businesses that fail to optimize websites for mobile risk losing a sizable portion of their uh, potential customers. So I guess one thing to keep in mind is that if nothing else, the mobile version of your website uh, should provide you contact details so people can ring you for more information if they're on the go. So the basic principles are that you need to keep it simple, you need to make it action oriented. If you can afford to, you should have different versions of your website for mobile and traditional because people are using your site in different ways in different contexts. So if you're able to have a mobile version that just keeps it very simple, then you can have the depth of information available uh, on your um, traditional website. Now the next thing you need to, to think about in terms of the, both the challenge and the opportunity that technology brings is that uh, you know, if you have your own website, or really you know, even if you don't at the moment, you are now today in the media business. Um, you need to be able to capture your market's attention and, and you've got a great opportunity to build an audience that will return and, and over and over again to you. Now, so to make that to happen for your website, you need to make sure you're giving your visitors uh, something to come back to. Uh, we all know it's cheaper to sell to existing customers than acquire new ones, yet the common line of thinking when it comes to website traffic is simply more, more, more. You know, how can I attract more visitors? How can I get more links? How can I get uh, more search traffic? Now, increasing traffic's not a bad thing, but uh, if you need a constant stream of new visitors to increase sales or leads, then um, you need to uh, look at the fact that marketing online now looks a lot like media. So your business must acquire attention as a crucial asset to, in order to help it grow. Your market is now expecting you to provide free content that's entertaining or useful, and it's very easy to publish content. So by doing that, it's a great way to become part of your market's online community and have your audience share your content with others. Now one key thing you need to think about is the, the, the fact that you're now a publisher is that you need to stop viewing your marketing activities through what we call a campaign filter, you know, which is something that has a big campaign has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You now need to adopt a long-term strategy uh, that's more like an editorial calendar. So you need to publish things constantly on an ongoing basis. Uh, to use one of my favorite phrases, you know, your website, your on, uh, all of your online presence, whether it's a website or social media activity, is now the beast that must be fed. So you need to plan how you'll feed that beast regularly. You know, it could be introducing an editorial calendar, um, publishing regular features, and other things that are known as sticky content. And these are the things that will keep people returning to your site. Now, I will just try to speak a little bit briefly about the, the, uh, what this concept is sort of seen as these days, which is a, a, another one of these buzzwords, uh, which is called content marketing. So basically what this means is that in this era of the consumer having more power, uh, people are receiving information and choosing to pay attention to what they want to pay attention to. And it's not a matter of um, uh, you know, them passively receiving your advertisements. So content marketing is uh, a term that involves attracting and retaining your customers by creating but also curating relevant and valuable content that's aimed at changing or enhancing consumer behavior. So it's an ongoing process that needs to be integrated into your overall marketing strategy. It focuses on owning your own media, not renting it. You need to remember, for example, that just three or four years ago, people were being exposed to 500 marketing messages a day. And today, because of the explosion in the internet, that figure is more than 5,000 messages a day coming through Facebook feeds, apps, product placement on TV and movies, all that sort of thing. So how do you cut through the noise? Well, you do it by uh, creating useful content rather than just 
uh, advertising content for uh, for your company. And that's where this concept of content marketing comes in. So the idea is that you uh, need to be seen as an expert in your particular area, uh, and people will rely on you for information and information that's helpful, not just uh, selly type information, as they call it. Um, one of the uh, writers in this area, a guy named Jay Baer, who uh, came up with this concept of uh, what he calls utility, which is Y-O-U-T-I-L-I-T-Y. -I -I He's saying that these days companies need to exhibit utility. They need to be useful to their customers. And he had the, the uh, quote, he says, if you sell something, you make a customer today, but if you help someone, you make a customer for life. It's a little bit like that, that old phrase about uh, feeding a man a fish or teaching a man a fish. Uh, so regardless of what type of marketing tactics you use, you should have um, you know, this sort of helpful content marketing across all uh, your areas. We've got another thing that we're thinking about here, online video. It's no longer nice to have addition to your marketing mix. It's becoming an essential tool for small businesses trying to stand out in a crowded market. Yet often for small, medium-sized businesses, creating video is quite daunting. Your dream may be to create something that goes viral, but where do you start? How do you make it interesting enough to get people to watch and then actually spread the message? And what exactly is your message? With the arrival of faster broadband speeds, more and more people are watching video online. Nielsen reports that 4.2 million Australians stream video content at least once a week. And despite stereotypes, stereotypes that only you know, the young and unemployed watch YouTube, recent Australian research actually shows that 41% of YouTube users are at least 40 years old. 57% are working, 55% are married, and 62% visit the site at least once a week. Now, one of my favorite quotes, which I think really relates to the use of video online in marketing, comes from that great sociologist of the 1960s, Marshall McLuhan. He said, anyone who tries to make a distinction between education and entertainment doesn't know the first thing about either. So what that means is that uh, you need to create videos that are both educational and uh, entertaining, and that will help uh, get your message across. Now, uh, we believe that video is a great way to blend those two items of education and entertainment. But one thing to consider is it's not necessarily as expensive as you think. You don't actually need to have um, you know, a full-blown uh, studio or an outside agency. You can sometimes create these uh, videos yourself. Uh, so I'd like to show a, a quick example. It's an oldie but a goodie. But here's a video that uh, shows you that it doesn't have to be expensive or difficult to produce. So let's take a quick, quick moment and watch. Will it blend? That is the question. I love my new iPad. It does a ton of cool things. But will it blend? That is the question. Doesn't quite fit in the jar, but I can take care of that. No! I knew I could get the iPad in a Blendtec Total Blender. I think I'll press the iBlend button. smoke. Don't breathe this. Ah, that was one tough pad. Okay, to me this is a 
perfect example of blending education and entertainment. This was a small company that, that, that had developed an industrial blender, and they just decided to set up this YouTube channel. The fellow uh, uh, Tom who is making those videos is one of the directors of the company. is an engineer. They just stuck a white coat on him. And he's uh, created this phenomenon that's now had hundreds of millions of um, YouTube views on their YouTube channel. And uh, they've made scores of videos where they just show how powerful this blender is by blending all sorts of different uh, items. Now, let's move on and we'll talk a little bit about search. Now, search engine optimization, search engine marketing can get very complicated and expensive. And as with some of these other topics, it can easily be the topic of its own webinar. So uh, I'm only able to touch on it really briefly in the middle of this broad discussion. But the basics of both natural and paid search are that you need to work out what are the words and phrases that your customers use when they're looking for information for your type of product or service. And it may not be the words that you use when you're doing your marketing information. You may actually find that you'll change some of your, um, the marketing collateral that you create once you determine what are the words that your, um, that your customers are using. So you need to use those sorts of words and phrases in your copy. And if you want to experiment with paid search, you can buy those words and phrases from AdWords. But you know, if budget is an issue, you can certainly uh, start off by just using the information on your website uh, and seeing how you go uh, with organic search. Because remember if, that if you're publishing plenty of useful content via your content marketing program, which I was just speaking about, then you'll pick up a lot of organic search. Now, we had a question that, that came in where uh, somebody was asking about, uh, about blogs and um, you know, the fact we haven't spoken on that yet. Well, that kind of fits in uh, with uh, what we're talking about, um, publishing other information. So you know, social media and blogs are certainly the basic requirements of every uh, publishing strategy. You need to have a good blog with a lot of good content and you need to be able to share it on social media platforms with lots of followers and fans. And those, uh, information, that information you put in those blogs uh, can also be supplemented by other content marketing type strategies such as a white paper or an e-book. Now white papers and e-books are used in content marketing to, uh, to shorten the period of lead generation. Uh, because of the education and persuasive uh, nature of the information, it can help speed up the uh, lead generation and also cut short the vast amounts of time that it might take to build relationships through a blog. Another tactic that's surprisingly resilient is the webinar. Here at ABCNS, we're finding a huge interest in webinars on topics of interest to uh, customers and potential customers. I mean, hey, you're listening to us right now, so. Um, you can see how it works. So if you come up with a useful topic, and if you market it properly, you can capture people's interest for up to an hour. I mean, what are we up to? About 40 minutes so far, and we had, haven't had too many people drop out. Now there's plenty of software tools and services available uh, that can help you keep your costs manageable when you're doing this sorts of thing. Uh, and again, I don't have time to go into uh, any of the actual brands at this point, but you certainly have a lot of options available. Now like when you're um, developing white papers and ebooks, the registration process for webinars is the key. Even if the turn up on the day isn't huge, you have a list of warm leads who registered for that webinar or who downloaded the, email, the white paper or the ebook, and then you can go back to them. So remember, when you get the follow-up email from us about what you thought about this webinar and whether you'd be interested in our other services, just remember you heard it here first. Now I'll also talk briefly about uh, LinkedIn. And this was uh, an area that we had a few questions about that came in ahead of time. Uh, because the, there has been a lot of interest in how uh, much worth is there in trying to target B2B customers as opposed to B2C customers when you're a small business do, working online? Well, I guess the answer to that is 
the um, uh, the tool that's used in the B2B context online is LinkedIn. Now, um, we might do another little poll at this time, and I'd be interested to see what uh, what you guys are doing on LinkedIn at the moment. So, if you look at the options, you know, do you just have a personal profile? Do you have a company web page? Uh, have you used LinkedIn to search for employees and business opportunities? Do you have a profile and a web page, or have you done all of those things? Or sadly, I also had to ask the question of what's LinkedIn? And it looks like we've got a couple of people who've, uh, who've actually answered, um, answered with that response. So the thing to um, remember about LinkedIn, and it's interesting, it looks like most people uh, that we've got here today only have a personal profile, but not a company page. Well, if I can encourage you, even if you're a, uh, a one-man band, I can I encourage you to actually uh, set up a company page um, because between that and the personal networks that you set up, you'll be able to build a, a lot more connections with other potential customers uh, by fully using LinkedIn. So if you set up a company page, you can post updates and products. You can also post updates via your own uh, personal profile. Um, but you'll also be able to uh, advertise for your um, job function or industry the same way that, uh, that people can do through Facebook. Uh, and then I could also encourage you if, that you make sure you join the conversation uh, with the relevant groups that are out there and also follow companies that, uh, that are similar to what you do. So let's close up here. Um, we've heard about a lot of different channels, but obviously there's so many more that we haven't had time to discuss today. I'm going to bring our thoughts back to, uh, back to the process of developing your plan. We've got a couple of comments here about you know, how best to promote a new sporting event. Um, and, you know, and what I'd suggest is that you go back to this planning process. So the, the example that I've got here is, is thinking about the used car dealership which we mentioned earlier. Firstly, they want to introduce young people to their brand so in the future when they're ready to buy that this dealership is the first, first, um, first option for them. They've narrowed down their, who their audience is. Their audience is first, car, first time car buyers in the 18 to 24 age bracket, possibly still living at home possibly single or in a relationship. Now where are these people? They've brainstormed a whole lot of ideas. So they use social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, student groups, YouTube, Instagram, just to name a few probably. Next point is to allocate your resources and budget. The company here have decided to allocate 5% of their profits to this target market. And that actually includes one part-time staff member. So developing an action plan. They've identified YouTube as the best channel for education. And this is something that, that I harp on a lot, is just pick one or two channels and really focus on those. So this company, they're going to use YouTube as their best channel. And what they're going to do is they're going to create one new video on the 1st and the 15th of every month. They're going to create a series of fun videos and these fun videos are going to educate young people on the basics and mechanics to get them engaged. And the, next, the last couple of points in the whole process is to review, review, review. So they've set metrics about how they're going to measure the results. A, they're going to increase the number of people sharing the videos with their friends by 30% and B, they're going to increase used car sales by 10%. Lastly, the next process for them will be to, um, to branch out from just educational videos. They'll start doing case studies. They'll start possibly educating people on how to buy a used car. Um, they'll answer questions about what to look for. Hey, they might even do a survey on what, what are the coolest cars. You know, the options are endless. But the thing here is be specific about how you're going to achieve your goals and go through the planning process with each of your goals.
The next thing is obviously to make all your activities measurable. You know, first set your big goals such as increased revenue of product X by 10% by next January and then break those down into smaller steps. Launch an educational video series about product X on the first Tuesday of every month or increase number of retweets about a product by 30% by reaching out and distributing content to influencers. The main point here is, is be quite specific. And lastly, ensure you have a weekly plan. You know, there's so many different options out there, it's important to bring it down. And remember, as, as Ray spoke about earlier, be consistent and do things well. Okay, to wrap it up, the point is you need to work at it if you want to be found. Now, there's a lot of competition out there, and one of the things to remember is that you're not only competing uh, with uh, your direct competitors, but you're competing with um, all the messages that people are getting uh, you know, when you're trying to get their attention. If you're on Facebook and you've got um, you know, your uh, message appearing in the middle of somebody's Facebook news feed, you're not just competing with other marketing messages, you're competing with uh, people's friends and family. Uh, so there's many different methods and channels to use to get in front of your audience. Now we've covered you know, a, a lot of the basics, but there, there are even more to, to talk about. So the first thing that you need to do perhaps is write down all the ones that are available. Consider seriously which ones of these um, are the, uh, would be most appropriate for your type of business, and then pick one or two of them to start off with and do them really well. Then when you get really good at doing those, you can move on to something else. Now, we might spend a couple of minutes um, looking at uh, some of the questions. And if anyone has any extra questions that they'd like to, uh, to post, now's the time to do that. I'd just like to look at one that we saw that came through a bit uh, earlier during the webinar where somebody was asking, what did we mean by the phrase, I want an experience? Um, and really, that, I think what that relates to is um, this whole idea of where technology has taken us, that, that people have so many different um, options for getting their information that they are not just in, interested in uh, dealing with a product today. They, they're looking at the whole customer relationship uh, cycle with you. So, you know, what do all your contact points look like? Um, are you publishing this useful information, you know, as we mentioned earlier, uh, to, you know, Facebook and through the blogs and, and Twitter and, and, uh, and all the traditional means as well? Um, you know, now it's not just a question of having an ad and then someone walks into your shop and buys a product and walks out again. From the first time they have contact with you when you might be posting some of this useful information online, they um, are starting to gain an experience with you. And if you successfully build a longer term relationship, they'll continue to have uh, that experience with you beyond the immediate uh, point at which they, uh, they buy a product from you. So. What is your customer service like? It's not just you know, what's your actual product like, but what is your customer service like before the sale uh, and after the sale? So that is like sort of the full experience that, um, that a customer might, uh, might gain from you. We've also got a question here about is it easy to embed a YouTube clip into your website? Um, that really depends on what platform your website has been built in. I, I use a lot of WordPress um, websites and yeah, it's really easy to, to embed a YouTube video <laughs> um, because cause the back end sort of set up for it. So yeah, it really depends on, on what platform you're using. Um, but if in doubt, have, have a chat with your website developer. All right, and another question is uh, on uh, LinkedIn is that uh, someone was wondering about uh, whether the credibility of LinkedIn has been um, affected by the fact that there is some you know, amount of spamming that, and fake information that goes on. Um, 
I think there's certainly a lot of uh, fake information across a number of sites, but it's probably not nearly as um, endemic on LinkedIn as other ones. And and I think that, that it is still you know strong enough and, and powerful enough brand that um, people will take you seriously as long as you're uh, presenting credible information. Um, now, what we might do at this point is um, wrap up those questions. And um, Jess, do you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, the digital enterprise program yeah. that's being run through ABC? And I will. I will. Before I go into that, um, I've just received seen a question here. I was told WordPress is susceptible to spam. Um, look, WordPress is an open source uh, platform. Uh, it's what that means is that uh, many different developers and so forth can actually create um, plugins and, and, can you, and can build websites on WordPress. Um, is it susceptible to spam more than, more than other platforms? Look, I don't think so. Um, but I do think that a lot of people, a lot of time when people set up a WordPress site, uh, they don't keep it updated, like they don't, um, move to the next levels, and which means that they're possibly sort of on older versions. So then they do get more more susceptible to spam than obviously the newer versions. Um, just be careful before everyone goes and upgrades their WordPress site because it can impact on on the plugins that you're actually currently using. I think we've got one question here that maybe fairly. Okay. Yes. Fairly easy for Ray to answer since this is right, right. up his alley. Someone was uh, asking what was the difference between uh, inbound and outbound marketing. Um, I suppose it, from a philosophical standpoint, the, the, uh, the difference is outbound marketing is with traditional marketing in that a company would just uh, advertise out into the universe and assume that customers are out there listening and that they're going to respond and then come and buy their uh, product or service as a result. Whereas inbound refers to the fact that uh, now you know consumers just have um, uh, all the power and they um, have access to all this information. They choose to find, to seek out companies to uh, to buy you know their product or service rather than being dictated to by the company, if you like. Um, the uh, interesting analogy that, that somebody um, had, you know, at a conference I was at recently where they were talking about that was um, the fact that these um, – that's beautiful. I just lost my train of thought about uh, what inbound marketing means. Um, no, I've got to be honest, that's actually gone past me now. <laughs> There is. We haven't eaten lunch yet, so, so I can wrap that up probably. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, inbound is where um, where you don't have to pay for it. Well, it's, like, where, the, it's where the consumer makes the decision to uh, to do business with you. So, oh, I, now I remember what what the, the the statistic I was thinking of. It was the fact that today a consumer makes. 70% of their buying decision before they actually uh, contact your company. So in the past, you know, people would ring you up or they'd come and see you and then they'd make a decision to buy from you. Whereas now they're doing all this research online. Uh, you need to make sure that the information that you've got available and then you need to make it available uh, it will help people make that decision so that when they ring you or when they walk in the door, you're just closing the deal. You're not actually informing them about your company, but they you, because they're already informed by by via inbound marketing. But what you're doing is just saying, okay, um, yes, we know what we're talking about, and we will be able to do business with you. Yeah, I often hear outbound is related to um, push advertising, like um, like actual. You know, paying for for print ads in the newspaper, or or for paying for your AdWords campaigns, or you know, paying for for 
I know I'm thinking of big banners and, and so forth around town on, on the side of buses and so forth. Um, yeah, that's, that's normally what people sort of think is outbound is where you're actually paying and pushing it out, whereas inbound is you're creating conversations with people and, and, and they're hearing about you that way and they're actually choosing to come and find you. So just to wrap it up here, I'm just going to um, just let you know about this new uh, government program that we've, we've just won a tender for. It's called the Digital Enterprise Program. And basically through it, it's, it's for uh, small to medium sized businesses, less than 200 employees. Um, can be anything from um, you know, your small micro business up until, as I said, 200 employees. And they, you can access free group training. But also the thing is that I really like about it, you can also access free four hours of face-to-face -face support. And even if you use that, just to sort of work, someone, work with someone through your plan. So our training workshops cover four main areas including business ops, website development, marketing and security. And the main reason behind this digital enterprise program is to help businesses better use the online space. Whether that's social media, uh, your website or you know, your security platforms or even um, to better, better work in with tele, telework with your, with your employees. So if you'd like to take up any of the free group training or the four hours of face-to-face -face support, I think the, the actual program is being launched next Wednesday. But you can find it online at depgreatersydney.com.au. And if you're from outside the Sydney area, there are similar programs that are being run by other organizations um, across the, the uh, country as well. So if you just... Um, you know, look at the NBN website, there should be uh, some information that will point you in the right direction. Great. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, we hope this has been helpful and uh, we'll be sending along the, uh, the, uh, the copy of the uh, slides to everyone who attended and then this, this uh, seminar has also been recorded and will be available on YouTube in the next couple of days. So. Uh, Thank you for your time and uh, best of luck uh, with your marketing. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is, is on the screen now. Um, and all the questions that we didn't get to, I'm so sorry, but, uh, but please feel free to contact me and hopefully we can get to them at a later point. Great, enjoy the rest of your day.